So fears are growing over the pro-Palestine Palestine march planned for Armistice Day this weekend. Uh, many people have called on the police to delay the protest or at least to safeguard the cenotaph. This was Met Police Commissioner Sir Mark Rowley's response. The law is very clear. Parliament's laid out a framework which means if people want to assemble for a protest or any other, any other reason, it will happen. So this weekend there will be a protest assembly because Parliament has said that can never be stopped. There may be marches, there may be other, other um, factors to consider. We can put tough conditions on this about where it's going to take place. The organisers aren't suggesting they're going to go near the Emirates events, but there will be a protest. But what I can say to the public is, it's the day before the main Remembrance events, and in any event, we will do our utmost to absolutely ensure that Remembrance and Armistice are not compromised to, to the smallest degree by these events. So we've already seen the Cenotaph at Rochdale mm. uh, vandalised by pro-Palestine to demonstrators. So we're asking you this question. Do you trust the police to safeguard your Remembrance Day? And if you don't, why not? So in the studio with us is former Met Police Detective Peter Blexley. And we're also joined by former Detective Superintendent at the Metropolitan Police, uh, Shabnam Chowdhury. Uh, let's start with you then, um, Peter. Have the police made the right decision about these protests? Sir Mark Rowley and the Metropolitan Police have handled this appallingly this week. The once world-renowned Metropolitan Police was reduced to writing a begging letter to the organisers yeah. of this pro-Palestine march. Pretty please don't have this march. And of course, the organisers said, we're going ahead with it. Yeah, of course they did. Even the most fervent police supporter must be really shaking their heads at this. However, it is going to happen. There will be the gathering. The decision on whether the march element will take place is yet to be formally decided. Mm. There is still a window during which the police could protest, or could rather go to the Home Secretary and ask for that. But Rowley has already said that the intelligence picture is not sufficient enough to justify a ban of the march element as things stand. Uh, Shabnam, uh, Mark Rowley to some extent is, is damned if he does and damned if he doesn't, I, I would say, because if he says that the, the march can't go ahead, it will go ahead anyway, and then there could be more, all sorts of chaos. Yes, but Mark Rowley has to act, um, he has to maintain his operational independence, and he can only work within the framework of the law. And the law says that they can protest, uh, everyone has the right to protest, and in order for him to have that march banned, he would have to write to the Home Secretary and he would have to outline to her that there is sufficient and credible information and intelligence that would indicate there is a strong likelihood of either serious disorder or serious violence. Now, he hasn't met that threshold yet, um, and we're on to, are we Tuesday now? No, we're Wednesday now. So he's got a couple of more days establish whether or not um, each day as he reviews the information and intelligence whether that march can be banned. But I take your point, between now and Saturday it's highly, highly unlikely that the thousands and thousands of people that are intending to march are suddenly going to say, do you know what, we won't come along because you've just banned the march at the last minute mm -hmm. because the most I very strongly about um, this uh, march. Peter, I just think it, I mean, you were very critical of Mark Rowley. I think it does make him look, it makes him look weak, knock-kneed, inept, and not in control of events. Oh, absolutely. And his indecisiveness has fuelled the fire of the far right. There's been a prominent, obnoxious man yeah. calling his supporters to right. come to London to fight for the country and the such like. So if the, the gathering will take place and the march element does happen, now the Metropolitan Police, largely of their own making, will not only be looking inwards towards the march to protect that and to identify and deal with any law breaking, also be having to look outwards from the march to see if there are any, any marauding gangs who are looking to create havoc, commit offences and, and further disrupt the, the march. Peter, just on a broader level, how, where do you think the British population is at the moment with the police and whether we trust our, uh, our services 
who were meant to be looking after us? Well, I did a very unscientific poll on X yesterday morning, which ran for 24 hours. Formerly Twitter. Indeed. And I had just asked a simple question, do you trust the police? Over 5,000 people voted in this straw poll of mine. And unfortunately, 74% of those who responded said, no, they do not trust the police. Uh, I think it was 13% said they did, and 13% were unsure. What a damning indictment mm. upon the current state of British policing that is. So, Shavin and Chowdhury, why has that poll came, come out with such a negative response to the police? Who's to blame for that? Well, I saw that, actually, um, and I think that you've got to look at um, uh, some of the scandals and events that have unfolded for police, the Metropolitan Police, for example. You had the murder of Sarah Everard, then you had David Carrick, then most recently you had um, Adam Proven, who was convicted of rape, a Met officer. You had the Hotton Inquiry, which was a Charing Cross WhatsApp group. You have um, the uh, selfie photographs of Nina Smallman and Biba Henry. And then you look across policing in general, you'll find that a number of police forces across the UK are in special measures. So I think trust and confidence isn't just low within certain sections of the communities. You've got women and girls that don't trust police. Unfortunately, the investigations of crime are low. Part of this is to blame. Um, is the fact that the number of policing has been reduced significantly. We cannot, you know, uh, say 20,000 people are now being recruited when actually 20,000 police were cut in the first instance. So on top of that, you've got people coming into policing, new recruits, it's like a revolving door. As soon as they're coming in, they're leaving. There's no experience, there's a lack of experience. The vetting processes within policing is poor and therefore you are allowing police officers who are criminals with a badge to come into policing. The Met Police at the moment is playing catch up with the number of officers that they're, that they're sacking. And I'll just go back to the point that Peter was making in respect of these protests. I'm sorry, but the fact is, Suella Braverman actually made some terrible comments that have actually stoked the fire and have been inflammatory that has instigated the right-wing groups to come forward who now want to come along and protect the the cenotaph. My personal view is actually I think all smaller things and Met are doing job in respect of policing that um, uh, those marches and the number of arrests that they in a range of powers, they're making sure that they use violent disorder, Section 35 dispersal orders, they, they're using a whole range of tactics, uh, super recognisers, facial recognition. They've got a big job on their hands this weekend and they've got to worry about the splinter groups that break off um, to where those right wing are they're now going to potentially meet up with those uh, extremists where they've got to manage any potential violence out of that. Peter, quick word on that on that point then and the picture there that Shabnam paints. Yes, of course, the uh, high profile cases of police appalling wrongdoing does affect public trust. But the rot runs far, far deeper than that. For the last 20 years or so, the police simply turned their backs on the moderate majority of Britain. They didn't investigate their burglaries, car thefts, bicycle thefts, phone thefts, and so on and so forth. And we've got a whole new generation of young people who accept crime as part of their everyday lives when they fundamentally shouldn't do. We've got an overly educated, um, woke, lib liberal kind of fluffy police leadership who only look inwards towards themselves, who are disconnected from the public, who have no idea of the challenges that face Britons every day. And consequently, the whole of British policing is in the, the state that, uh, that it fundamentally is. OK. Bleak and very Bleak. Yeah, disheartening. I'm, and I'm afraid I'm, agree I'm fully agreeing with Peter. Yeah. Uh, Shabnan Chowdhury, Peter Bletchley, uh, good to see you both uh, this morning. Thank you very much. Let us know your thoughts. GBviews at gbnews.com.